Oh yes, more Tucson Tuesday. Uh, and this week I'm jumping back into uh, Jelly Jerry. Uh, I did cover the uh, the Aurora, the 228 last week. So this week I'm covering the uh, TS-229 or the Megalodon here. Um, and yes, I have recently got uh, a couple more uh, Jelly Jerry designs in uh, since basically three new ones have uh, emerged and they're all kind of... Uh, numbered a little bit earlier than uh, this one in particular. Uh, I'll try to uh, get back to them as things go, but yeah, as uh, this year kind of starts up after this one, I think I'm going to um, start taking a look at um, some of the uh, the newer designs, uh, especially since I have um, uh, quite, a, quite a few of them that have come in and uh, I'm still waiting for like somewhere between 9 and 13 of them to uh, <laughs> come in at this point that are all pretty new as well so that might be what uh people are a little bit more interested in but uh rest assured i will get around to uh all of these things but uh all right yep now that i'm a minute into the video here uh, <laughs> go ahead and open this guy up this is a front flipper uh as i said it's named the megalodon that's the ts229 it's an m390 steel and uh, as far as i'm aware that's the only um uh, variant that has uh, been out there for it, but it, it is possible that this thing was originally made in uh, D2 or 14C28N uh, before I was collecting. I don't know. Uh, what is interesting about this guy is, um, well, it's been around for a, a while and um, not uh, not as highly uh, priced as some of the others that are uh, fairly large in the M390 kind of space here. Uh, I picked this one up from White Mountain Knives. Uh, I think I paid like 120 bucks for it, whereas a lot of other ones were um, more expensive than that um, from them and other uh, retailers, like uh, some people on Amazon. Uh, yeah, I think maybe part of the reason is because it's Jelly Jerry rather than... Um, who is a pretty prolific uh, knife designer at this point, uh, also doing some um, designs for uh, some other companies. Uh, as well these days, but, um, yes, not quite sure, but, uh, hey, it's a nice knife. It, it is a front flipper, basically on the exclusive side there. We do have, um, a fuller, but it's very, very up towards the, uh, the pivot. So for me, um, doesn't really work out, uh, either way there. And, uh, you can maybe kind of, uh, pinch or, or try to get that out there uh, otherwise but hey the front flipper works great so that's what we're going to do with that obviously this is a titanium and uh, carbon fiber frame lock very long clip on this thing uh, which is uh, interesting this one's much longer than a lot of others uh, doesn't really have anything there in the middle so it does flex a little bit it's not brittle by any stretch of the imagination but um, might not be the most subtle clip in the uh in in the entire world but uh yeah we can also see we got that stop pin up there at the top maybe way way back here uh it's right by the uh right by there so i don't really have any problems with the uh the blade spine getting too close it does look maybe like it is just a little bit up here but uh you also have the uh the backspacer in the way there uh, and also the way that's designed, um, that front flipper piece is, it comes absolutely nowhere near your finger when you're opening them up. Uh, the ear goes on this thing are pretty good. Uh, a little interesting, but, uh, works out quite well. Uh, it has some of those, uh, kind of humps that have been, uh, kind of cut down uh, a lot like the, uh, 228, but, um, these things seem to, uh, follow, my hand, uh, whereas the 228 um, didn't really follow um, a human hand as far as the design goes, at least as far as I was concerned. So there's there's that. Uh, we can see we have a a nice down cant to the blade. Um, first, the uh, the straight portion of it here uh, does come down, and then we do have a a large area here in the uh, compound grind section at the front there. And that keeps the tip super nice and um, robust up there. But that also uh, gives you a little bit of um, the uh, 
benefits of a Tonto where you have basically two different uh, tip sort of areas there. Uh, but one is a little bit more easy to access for doing utility cuts. And then you also have the top up here, which is uh, very strong for doing any kind of uh, piercing or um, routing or anything like that that you might want to do with it. Uh, I do like this thing quite a bit. We have some... Um, Wow, these are much wider apart than I would consider to be jumping. This is uh, pretty much some crenellations of some sort there. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> works out all right. That clip is um, works out all right. It doesn't really feel like it's getting in the way of me um, gripping this knife in any particular way that's um, going to bother me. Uh, this thing at the front here, um, maybe if you have some itty-bitty fingers... You could use that as a finger choil. Uh, I basically consider it to be a uh, a uh, large sharpening choil because, well, for one, you have the uh, the pointy stuff here at the um, at the handle uh, that really don't let you um, use the uh, the flat of the blade there for it. But it's also just way too small for my index finger. But uh, hey, we all know my hands aren't exactly the uh, the smallest things as far as uh, human hands go. But uh, works out all right. Uh, also works pretty decently in the uh, reverse kind of cutting position there. Um, as well as the uh, the hammer grip or reverse hammer grip, which has this uh, nice kind of area back here for you to really loop your thumb around for um, getting some uh, nice penetrative power, uh, being able to uh, concentrate your force there. So uh, that's pretty darn cool. And uh, the pivot on this thing is pretty interesting in that it's a very, has a very small amount of uh, titanium around it there. Uh, that being said, it's not brittle in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but I guess in the grand scheme of things, it might be a little more structurally unsound than uh, some of their other models, but still much more than what you would uh, absolutely want to use a folding knife for in the first place. Uh, the carbon fiber, super, super nice, as usual. Um, don't really have any flaws or voids going on there. They do a pretty darn good job of that. Yeah, I like this thing quite a bit. Um, let's see. I should probably do some comparisons, which means I actually need to find what I did with a lot of my other knives here. Here we are. I moved them out of the way earlier. Uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and start out with the, uh, the rat number one. And then follow that up with the uh, Spydeco PM2, which I'm not... I really don't understand it. This knife always feels so much smaller to me than... Um, other knives of the uh, the same size. I don't quite get it. Uh, I mean, the, the choil is probably a little bit of it, but uh, yeah, it's just in general. I don't know. Maybe the uh, the PM2 just isn't quite my jam like it is for uh, almost everybody else. There we go. We got the, uh, the Clash Nikon 74. We got the good old uh, Spartaco Endura. That's, uh, that's a big boy there. Move these guys out the way as well, so I can uh, make way for the uh, the uh, the very well used uh, Benchmade 940, and of course the uh, the K Bar Dozier down here. That's uh, obviously smaller. So yeah, um, this thing has a little over three and a half inch blade. And it's 3.59 inches is what I've measured, uh, and the blade thickness on it uh, a bit like that. Um, uh, Monarch that I'd taken a look at a little bit ago. This has a four inch blade stock on it, which is uh, pretty crazy <laughs> But they do a pretty darn good job of uh, grinding it down there. That being said, I mean up towards the tip Obviously, this is designed to be a quite the robust knife. So the thicker blade stock does make a little bit of sense on here As far as the thickness goes without the clip here, we're talking uh, 0 0.57 of an inch So eh, a little bit thicker than the uh, the PM2 but, uh, yeah, probably right around that same sort of area that the, uh, the rat number one is in. And, uh, as far as the weight goes on this, we got 4.82 ounces or 136 and a half grams. So, yeah, I mean, it's a big knife. You're not really going to get a, uh, 
a knife like that uh, super, super light, unless you uh, really cut some corners like a, like a Benchmade bug out where they, they use some uh, fairly flexible um, uh, poly materials that uh, don't quite feel structurally sound. Uh, titanium is nice and light for it being nice and light, but that being said, it's still a, uh, a very structurally sound metal. So, hey, it has some weight to it. What are you going to do? This isn't uh, something that you probably want to take if you're uh, very much conserving weights in, uh, in a backpack or something like that for uh, long treks. But uh, as far as EDC and everything like that, knives under five ounces, I don't care. Uh, absolutely none of that bothers me. I might not want to wear it if I'm wearing basketball shorts in the middle of summer without uh, any kind of um, suspension capabilities. But hey, most of the time I'm in Carhartt work pants with a nice belt anyway, so it really doesn't matter unless it's like five pounds. I really wouldn't notice myself. So there you go. Uh, there's the weight on it. Uh, we can go ahead and take a look on the inside of them too. I generally do that with all of these. And uh, this one's going to be no different. Uh, but Yep, you can see here that uh, the clip is mounted from the inside, so you don't have anything going on out there. It's kind of a neat design. I really do like uh, when they do that. Um, it's not all the time, but uh, it's becoming more and more common with Tucson's to do that. But yeah, we got these two screws here in the back going through that. This one is generally going to be cut by that pocket clip. That's just kind of the way that works. And then we got the pivot here. And at that point, with some uh, wiggling and prayers and whatnot, yeah, well, I'll just take the blade out first. Okay, there we go. Make it just a little bit safer for my fingers. But uh, yes, we can see we don't have any um, skeletonization or anything going out on the, uh, the inside liners there, but we can see... Um, the carbon fiber on these is uh, fairly thick, so that's generally why they didn't need to. They probably could have just a little tiny bit, but um, it would just make the knife a lot more, a lot more expensive to do m more machining on both sides. So yeah, I'm perfectly fine with them being flat on the inside. We have what is an absolute chungus of a, uh, a blade stop pin there, which is great because this blade does have quite a bit of um, uh, thickness and heft to it and uh, doing that front flip, uh, most people, myself included, do include some wrist action in there, whereas they generally don't with, um, with a uh, flipper or um, heck even the thumb studs most of the time. You don't need that. So... Uh, it's uh, pretty impressive to see uh, a, a stop pin of uh, such caliber uh, just kind of chilling in there. And, uh, yes. So, yeah, as you can see, uh, basically, uh, right here, there's a little tiny notch where it doesn't have steel covering it on the, uh, the lock bar side. But, hey, that's also where the lock bar is, along with the steel insert that's acting as the uh, the over travel stop so yeah nice and uh, structurally sound without really having too many problems going on there let me actually make sure that i get uh, both sets of um <laughs> bearings in there so i don't act any more a fool than i uh, i already am and yeah here And I usually like to uh, do the pivots first, just so I can get the blade closed and out of the way. And then, of course, slap those two screws back in there. Oops. And obviously, try your best not to uh, cam out of the screws, so you don't end up rounding either the screws or the uh, the bits. But uh, I have recently uh, purchased several more of these um, T8 uh, bits from Weha. Um, I already had quite a few of the T6s, but I don't use them anywhere near as much as the T8s now because um, 
you know, I have a lot of two sons, and uh, well, they they use T8 more than anything else. But uh, yeah, the action on this thing is uh, pretty darn nice. Um, you can see uh, we have some uh, pretty tight tolerances between the um, the uh, the frames on here and the blade itself. Um, it's not absolutely uh, invisible between that, but a um, little tighter than all the others. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty interesting knife. I do like this thing, and I really did like the fact that um, they're a little bit more affordable than a lot of the other uh, M390 uh, titanium frame locks from uh, Tucson, uh, especially some of the newer ones that are coming out from uh, Night Morning and uh, Mazel and Mokhtar. So, alrighty. Well, this was fun. So, yes, uh, after this, I think I'm going to uh, jump up to uh, some uh, higher counts of these um, two sons. Uh, I'll probably come back to uh, revisit the uh, TS-213 and 215, which I'd uh, recently got in that are Jelly Jerry designs. And there's also um, uh, don't remember, but there's another one. It's Micarta Front Flipper. That's uh, um Maybe the 214, somewhere right around there. Another Jelly Jerry design. I'm working on trying to get one, uh, but uh, I have not currently won one or seen them for uh, sale for a price that uh, I really want to split with for it yet. But I'll get it eventually, and uh, we'll cover it on the channel. But until then, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.